It's called the Mind Eraser. Just you wait, we'll ride it. But check this out first. Check out the big hill. Right now it's taking a long time for the train to cover that distance. The train's not going all that fast, but by the time it gets to the top of the hill, it's got some speed. Now check out what happens to its speed when it gets to the bottom. Right now it's going pretty slow, but as it rounds that curve, it's gonna hit its max speed right about there. At that point, the train is going the absolute fastest it can. The time it takes the train to change its speed from what it was going up at the top to what it's going at right here at the bottom is called acceleration. All right, I just forgot something that I wanted to mention to you regarding train of thought. That is the linkage. Linkage is a worksheet that is designed and created for the purpose of helping you gain the meaningfulness out of relationships, like this one right here, the speed relationship. The purpose of the linkage is to help you identify everything you know conceptually about this relationship in addition to determining how we got to this place, how we get to the place where we needed speed. Why did we develop this relationship? How did we get there? And also, where can it be used? Why would we want to use it? How else can we use it? And lastly, some applications that help you remember this relationship for what it is. So linkage is something that you can print off off of the CD in addition to blank worksheets and the instruction template. I also want to encourage you to go back to the introduction to see an example of a fully fleshed out linkage that I walk through with you so you have a good idea about how to construct them. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at that Go back and check those things out if you want to. But I find linkages to be highly effective when it comes to identifying relationships and their meaning, where they fit into this whole thing called physics. All right, well, onward. We have been talking about speed. Now it seems only fitting that we measure the speed of something and talk a little bit from that angle. So let's determine some speed. Okay, let's go over to our bin here. First of all, you need a cool car. I got myself a cool car. We have one stopwatch for measuring time. What's even cooler is the car's remote control. All right. Going to need a couple meter sticks for measuring. And of course, a ramp. All right. I'm going to take this meter stick, I'm going to put it right out front here. As an example, it seems fitting to use the distance of a meter. Now, if we want to measure the speed of this car as it crosses this meter, we'll need to know measurements or information about how much distance was covered and how much time it took to cover that distance. In order to do this, we need to establish our frame of reference as that being on the surface of the Earth. So I'm going to put the, our frame of reference, or our origin, right at the, at the starting line, if you will, of our car, so that I can define forwards as being positive, and there will be motion relative to the origin. All right, so in order to calculate the speed of a moving car, let me show you how the car works here so you can see the motion that we're going to, um, to consider. Now, there's cool sound effects to my car. Check it out. All right, check it out. Let me start the engine. OK, I'm starting the engine. Oh, wait, wait, I got to turn it on. I forgot about that part. On, OK. And notice we're considering the zero to be at the front of the car. OK, got to start my engine now. Yeah, that's cool. Huh? You got to admit, that's pretty cool. OK, all right, now, in order to make it go, all I have to do is press this button. Ready, set, go. Hey, go. OK, we're working on a, there we go. Got to point at it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It's even got brakes. It'll launch right off here, so I don't want to do that right now. Okay, so you get the idea about how the car works. Now, we're going to take this meter stick, and we're going to measure the time it takes to cross 
the front of the car from its initial point at the starting line to one meter down the road. Now, as always, we want to communicate everything that we're doing. So let's identify as much as we can right off the bat. Okay? Let's do some erasing real quick. All right, in order to determine the speed of an object, we need to know the change in distance. Well, I'm going to start at zero meters. So my initial displacement will be zero meters. My final displacement will be one meter down the road. Now, when it comes to time, when it comes to time, we also want to identify our initial and final times. But time being a scalar, number one, has no direction. And number two, when we're measuring time of something, we usually identify the initial time as being zero. We usually start timing something at zero. And for that reason, this whole thing, this whole business right here, is often communicated as simply delta t equals because ti is always going to be zero. So keeping that in mind, we want to measure the total distance, and we can see that delta d is equal to 1 meter, final minus initial, and we need to get our time. All right, well, let's go measure our time. All right, now, practicing on my stopwatch, start, stop, clear, all right, and we're at the start here, at the, the front end of the car is at the zero meter mark, and I'm going to stop timing when it gets down to the final meter mark, okay, or one meter mark. Okay, all right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. All right. <laughs> it's cool, huh? All right. My measurement came out to be 1.28 seconds. 1.28 seconds. In a high quality experiment, experimenting with a, in a real lab situation, you would want to repeat these measurements several times, gain an average in order to really eliminate or minimize error as much as you possibly could. Being this a demonstration, I'm going to take my one measurement and move forward. But I don't want to miscommunicate that this measurement should be taken several times under ideal conditions as much as you can. Identifying the control groups and um, really focusing and keeping the lab clean in terms of data. You want to be specific with your data. So I'm going to take it just once for purposes of demonstrating here. All right, well, now that we have our change in distance and our change in time, we're now able to calculate our speed. Now our speed is defined by the expression over to the right in the box. We have our distance and we have our time. Our question would be, what is the speed going on here? How fast is this car actually moving? Well, we define speed as a change in distance over a change in time. And we can see that our change in distance is 1 meter divided by 1.28 seconds. Following through with this calculation, and I'll let you pop that out on the calculator, you will get some value in meters per second. Now, we haven't talked about the units of speed until this moment here. But recall that we defined speed over on our table, and that we need to go back and identify the units of speed. So let's go over to our table and write in meters per second as our units. We can see that distance is measured in meters, and time is measured in seconds. And the units of speed are meters per second. Meters per second. So we've got one more quantity with its symbol and its unit spelled out for us here. OK? All right, well, speed isn't all that hard to work through. You need a measurement of distance or displacement. And once again, distance and displacement can be used synonymously when it is straight line motion. So you'll hear me using those back and forth. We will be using um, speed 
as a measure of distance and displacement, or the rate at which distance is covered. All right, well, we need to break this speed down just a little bit more specifically. So let's take a break and go and look at this a little bit more.